I hope that I may desire more than I can accomplish. These are words of Michelangelo. We're going to kind of compare Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci today. This is Stephanie Kwame from the Cat Academy. Michelangelo is probably best known for the magnificent statue of David and the beautiful frescoes on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. He was born on March 6, 1475, making him a t contemporary of Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci was about 20 years older than he was, but they lived in an exciting time of revival. We had just come through the Dark Ages, and the Renaissance brought about a revival of intellect and artistic achievement like none, no time since. He might not have become the sculptor that he was if it weren't for the problems with his birth. His mother had a difficult time and she couldn't take care of him. And so a, he went, he was placed in a family that did stone cutting so the mother there could uh, be his surrogate mother. And his mother died when he was only six years old. So you might say that both he and da Vinci had difficult beginnings. Michelangelo's dad also had a desire for him to go into business, but Michelangelo wanted to be a stone cutter and he wanted to be an artist. And his dad would beat him because he did not want his son to be a what he called a craftsman. He wanted him to be a businessman. Finally, his dad understood that that was his passion in life and he sent him to study art and the gentleman he, under, uh, he was studying under told his dad that Michelangelo had no talent in art, which is totally untrue. Michelangelo, like Leonardo, used an engineering notebook, but he was less prolif prolific. He left less uh, pages behind, and he also minutely studied the human body so he could uh, make things realistic in his paintings. On the left, you see a note from his notebook, or a page from his notebook, and on the right is a beautiful statue by Michelangelo, well known, the Pieta, or the Compassion. He said, in every block of marble, I see a statue as plain as though it stood before me, shaped and perfect in attitude and action. I have only to hew away at the rough walls that imprison the lovely apparition to reveal it to the eyes of others as he saw it. <clears throat> he said, I saw the angel in the marble and carved until I set him free. So Michelangelo, uh, I think his real passion was being a sculpture, sculptor. And he was so good at it that even modern machinery can't recreate what he did. Michelangelo had a tremendous work ethic and uh, he would often eat, sleep, uh, just to continue doing the work he was doing with his clothes and his boots on. He was also a loner and a perfectionist. While working on the Sistine Chapel, he started with some help, and it was a tremendous job. And it, uh, it, it entailed some ath athleticism because you had to dangle from the ceiling and different angles to uh, complete the ceiling. But he let them all go because they didn't do the job he wanted them. He didn't do the job that he expected to be done. And he ended up completing it on his own. The right is a fresco from the Sistine Chapel, and to the left is the hand from the Statue of David. And you can see he studied the blood system flow, etc., and the movement of the hand. He said, if you knew how much work went into doing what he did, you wouldn't call him a genius. Like da Vinci, Michelangelo was multi-talented. He was an artist, sculptor, a poet, and an architect. And uh, he created a huge dome in St. Peter's Basilica that was the largest dome at that time. He created an amazing library and this is the reading room from it. He said a beautiful thing never gives so much pain as does failing to, uh, to hear and see it. And I think in our age of technology that we often fail to hear and see the beauty around us. So I ask you what is your passion? What were you born to do? The sculpture at the last is Michelangelo's last statue he was working on. And even though he was very old, he still had that desire to create. 
He said, the greatest danger for most of us is not that our aim is too high and we miss it, but it's too low and we reach it. He said, Lord, grant that I may always accomplish, I may always desire more than I can accomplish. So I think some takeaways we can have from the life of Michelangelo is that he was a hard worker. He completed his tasks, unlike Leonardo da Vinci that was uh, so distracted that he left things unfinished. Except for his last project, he completed everything. And then the condition of your birth or your youth cannot keep you from your passion in life. If you are really driven to do something, make up your mind and do it and never 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 give up and aim high and work hard to obtain that we are uh, trying to get you interested in entering the cat academy national contest we have designed something make a difference using solidworks and the lead dream home contest using archicad they start right after the winter break and they end on the last day of february 2014 there's some great prizes so we hope that you consider entering you can easily learn SOLIDWORKS and ARCHICAD now. You can log in with your instructor's login into the instructor portal and start doing some uh, exercises there that the projects that lead you step by step into learning the software. And I leave you with three thoughts. Men's best successes come after their disappointments. And I think many people have trouble learning software. I found from all my years of teaching that uh, some people learn it fast and forget it fast and some people learn it slowly and remember it forever so be kind with your learning style and my a goal is a dream with the deadline and that's what the contest is our greatest weakness lies in giving up the most certain way to succeed is always to try just one more time and I hate to think of the many times that I if I hadn't tried one more time I wouldn't have succeeded so please join our contest and until next time Thank you for listening.